Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology and ahead of the Longevity Investors Conference, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the founder and CEO of the Methuselah Fund, David Goebel. Dave, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, Dave, well, I mean, you know, you've, you've been around this industry for a very long time. And uh, I, I guess that looking at your website and the, the mission that you guys have got, which is to make uh, uh, 90 the new 50 by 2030, you know, it's all about acceleration. So with, with seven years to go, I guess my first question would be, you know, are you um, frustrated by the biotech freeze that's happening in, in investment marketplaces or are you kind of working your way around that? Uh, so frustration is an emotion that isn't particularly useful. So if I thought a lot about it, I would get frustrated. But these things come and they go. Winter happens. And so you have to plan for it or at least uh, adapt to it. So no, I'm not frustrated. Um, one of the signal best times to invest in an emerging uh, marketplace is when everyone else runs for the hills. And uh, at the absolute nadir of the global financial collapse, we made our first investment on uh, in March 2009. The NYSE was, uh, I think the number was 666, or maybe that was the S&P. So <laughs> I took that as a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> And so we made our first investment and uh, we went on to a 42X game. Well done. That's very interesting. And I guess that the, you know, the, the fact that you've got such a, uh, a great and diverse portfolio from the likes of Ocean Biotechnologies, Turn, Volumetric, uh, you know, you've been active on the, on the biotech uh, side of things now for a while. Um, I did look at a very interesting chart that, sh that showed the dot-com uh, cycle and the biotech cycle more or less overlapped each other in terms of the, their shape. So do you feel that um, markets will start to pick up again? Obviously not at the level that they may be in the past, but do you feel that there's a period of time that we're going to go through this correction and others will catch you up? Or, or do you feel we're in the tunnel for a bit longer yet? Uh, I think we're going to hit an inflection point. I'm not sure which way it will go. Think of it as the old uh, saloon doors. They're going to go, but you're not sure which way. But I think that we will know by the second quarter of 2024 latest. Um, it could either be that there will be a, um, you know, falling off the cliff for the markets because of interest rates and quantitative tightly tightening finally taking hold in a serious way. And that will... Uh, induce uh, governments to pivot and rapidly reduce interest rates. And so uh, you'll hit the bottom and then come right back up like a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably the strongest scenario. Um, but, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Exactly. Well, I guess it's um, it's like anything. It's um, We've got a period of time now between... We're now post Labor Day, and we've got got Thanksgiving, so there's that sprint time, and then of course there's next year. So you feel that it's going to take a couple of quarters of next year for it to sort of really show itself as to whether there's going to be a pickup in 2024. Yeah, I I think that uh, we're in a, a period of time similar to the uh, movie Forrest Gump, where Lieutenant Dan is in the mast and yelling at God, "Do your worst." Right. <laughs> Got it. And, then the, and then the next day, all the other boats are sunk. And so um, our strategy right now is to stay afloat. And there are lots and lots of companies that it's very, very sadly, good companies that are sinking. So, you know, that it's, it's a funny thing. Hum, humans run for the hills typically at the best time to buy. And it's, it's just a normal human reaction. But it goes against the uh, the best way to make money. Uh, one of my favorite statements is, "You don't make money on the sell; you make your money on the buy." Yeah. 
So let's talk about that, uh, if if we can, Dave. About you know the you know the Methuselah funds strategy. I I believe you've put a lot of your own capital to play in Methuselah, and of course that would be representative of being like a family office, right? Obviously, you you employ a lot of venture capital tactics. I'm sure in the way that you do your due diligence and the uh, the size and the stage that you get involved with. So. If I was sitting in the Longevity Investors Conference audience as a as a family office thinking about, okay, well, I, I want to get involved in longevity. I can see the trend happening. How would you deploy your, your, your precious family capital into this industry? What would you be looking for? Well, I'd be looking for the votes likely to survive. I would take a look not at their PR because PR is pretty much driven by an attempt to attract capital. I mean, that... So you really can't use that that much. Most of our winners came by way of strong contacts in the, um, well, there wasn't an industry, but in the, met, in the uh, scientific community. And yeah. believe it or not, in the hedge fund community. Okay. Where, well, there are a lot of smart people in the hedge fund community, right? So, yeah. you know. Yeah. So the hedge fund community is looking for an edge, and an information edge is the most important one. Well, if it's on the PR wires, <laughs> everybody knows about it. Yeah. So that's how we found Turn, uh, for instance, and how we found uh, our first uh, invested company was through a hedge fund. And, uh, you know, Turn has a dominant uh, patent port, uh, position in epigenetic uh, reprogramming. Yeah. There's others, others out there, but, you know, we've already had patent issued. Mm -hmm. on this and yep. very broad so it actually surprised us but it was very broad so yeah there you go well i guess it's quite interesting because when you look at um there are some in your portfolio there are some uh companies that are very disease focused others that are more platform focused whether it's epigenetic reprogramming or whatever it may be so you're you're playing a horizontal and vertical game as as i would see it um and of course, there's, there are trends, right? So some people want you know, single asset, single disease, you know, nice, clear uh, road to communication of, uh, of, of value, right, so, to investors. Uh, so how do you look upon these investment opportunities, the ones that obviously you've, you've uh, invested in, they're, they're public and they're there for everybody to see, but you must be getting countless deals coming into you on a, on a weekly basis to make some assessments as to where you're going to deploy that capital. So how do you look upon the longevity industry? Um, so we're, we're actually in the later stages, in my opinion, of uh, exploring and exploiting the opportunity space. So for the last, uh, call it 2009 through today, we've been looking at a, a, the waterfront of how can you impact this either tactically or strategically, where, where this is extending the healthy human lifespan. And we made our, our motto, our mission, falsifiable by saying by 2030. So that's a fabulous mind-focusing <laughs> device. Yep. Um, so um, Alzheimer's is an example of, our, of a tactical approach, which says, if you don't take care of Alzheimer's and other um, needs of cleaning out the brain, then it doesn't matter if you're 90 and you have a body of a 50 year old, if your brain has gone out to lunch. Yeah. So we have to fix that. And everything we are doing, in my opinion, to address Alzheimer's is wrong. I should say almost everything because we're trying something. Right. Right. Uh, and that's a uh, Lucadia. And that is part of our strategy to get the crud out. So rather than an investment thesis, we have a series of strategies and look for things that uh, technologies and science that addresses the strategies. So I just mentioned one, get the crud out. You're yeah. not going to live a long time and be healthy if your body is a landfill. And you can just look at older folks and see the, you know, the, the pear shape or the, the apple shape of the body. That's a bunch of junk. So. Yes, we, we like platforms. Um, if you think about aging as a syndrome, a multi-symptom syndrome, you're going to need multi-vector uh, kinds of solutions. Most longevity-focused companies get derailed 
because of, a, of a, an imperative to go after a single disease. And uh, we go for platforms because we want to have many shots on goal and have the opportunity to um, uh, syndicate and also attract uh, pharma partners who do have single, you know, uh, disease goals or, you know, single disease areas that they're mining, if you will. Yeah. And maybe, uh, Dave, could we just sp- spend a little time on that one? Because, of course, um, I'd imagine that you're pretty early capital into these deals. And uh, does Methuselah take a lead position on rounds or... Um, you're taking the due diligence, or do you do you work with others for that? Um, up until recently, we were always the first money in, but we didn't um, do much follow on after the uh, seed stage because our goal is is uh, primarily to achieve the nonprofit mission, um, the benevolent mission. And secondarily, to fund our operations in large part by gains. Yeah. So, uh, so our, you know, we have to be honest about what our strategy is. And now I've forgotten your question. Uh, so it was just that obviously you, your first money in a lot of the time at the uh, stage, and of course you've then got to decide whether you're going to follow on or how you're going right. to help the portfolio company direct its way of travel through its funding cycle. So it's just right. really understanding how you approach that as an organization. It'd be right. very interesting. Yeah, so we did our first uh, lead uh, like, I guess, two weeks ago. So oh, yeah, we did, we did a lead around, did the due diligence. Um, and, um, you know, it's a multi-tranche uh, Series A, but the uh, first tranche was successful. And um, people couldn't believe it, <laughs> that it was successful in this uh, winter that we're experiencing. So we're pretty proud of that, happy about it. And is that public now, uh, which company that is? Uh, not just yet. Um, okay. Probably by the time we do the uh, conference, we'll be able to talk about it. And that's interesting. So so were they doing that under a, a safe note strategy or were they just actually doing it under a, a pure model of investment, which obviously they closed off part of the round, but still have the round open. It would be the latter. It's, it's a, you know, bona fide, uh, classic series, a, um, you know, preferred shares, all of the, uh, convertible notes converted into equity, you know, just like you'd expect. Right. Great. That's good to hear. Well, I look forward to hearing who that is in due course. Okay. Great. So um, in terms then of a family office that's looking to get in, I mean, do you feel that when you're syndicating, let's say, for example, you take a lead, would you see a family office actually investing directly or would you always advise a family office to consider pooling in with a with a venture capital fund? You know, I don't have an opinion about that. Um, should I? <laughs> yeah, from my point of view, it's your money. You decide what you're going to do with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. What would be best for the family office? Some family offices are very familiar with bio- biotech and very competent at figuring out what's a good deal and what isn't a good deal on the axis of, of the uh, size of the addressable market, the stage of the technology, um, the IP portfolio, you know, all of that. And then there are some who want to use a, a uh, cover the waterfront um emerging markets approach and they want to um you know not quite be limited partners but sort of be like limited partners and let someone else who has the expertise or appears to have the expertise go after it for them so that's another way of saying i don't know yeah, well, I guess that like everything, there, there are many options, and of course, I'm sure this will be discussed at length at the uh, at the upcoming conference. But uh, before we wrap up, uh, Dave, you know, what are the areas that you're interested in in terms of the sort of scientific approaches that are out there? Obviously, there's a lot of things going on, everything from cellular reprogramming and at that whole uh, early stage preclinical biotech phase, as well as a whole industry which is happening already, like supplements, clinics, all that type of thing. You know, what, what are the areas of uh, longevity that are interesting, Methuselah? fund at the moment? Well, I can tell you what we're investing in. We're investing in clinical delivery of uh, off-label 
uh, lifestyle and supplement interventions. And our anecdotal results are that we've been able to, uh, using methylation clocks and uh, functional biomarkers, classic functional biomarkers, we're, we're getting a mm, uh, nine to 12 year age reversion. Wonderful. And, it, and when you say um, off label, so is that within a uh, onshore USA environment or are you offshoring that activity? No, it's, it's onshore using Great. board, board certified practitioners. Um, you know, it's, it's just part of medicine. Uh, we at the foundation gave a, a, a prize to the, uh, science, um, manager who, uh, put together the, a three center trial for rapamycin in mice. Right. And so we, that was 2010. And we, you know, we kept a look at that. And over the years, we, we more and more came to the conclusion that, you know, this is real. It's really doing it. Mm -hmm. We may not know exactly why or how we have theories, but who cares? It works and does no harm as far as we can detect. Yeah. So that's, that's part of the clinic, but there's more. So what else are we investing in? We continue to prosecute our epigenetic reprogramming axis. You know, that, that is uh, one of our strategies, renew the code. You know, we're information machines. That's what we are. Our information is uh, manifested in dirt, you know, various elements. We're made of dirt, <laughs> yeah. which is kind of fun if you think about it. And so it's the programming that makes that work. So there's startup programming and then there's uh, age dependent programming. So we want to reduce and they remove to the degree possible the replicative senescence at the um, programming level. Epigenetic programming, uh, reprogramming is what we're focusing on. Yeah. And, and finally, um, we've got a couple of things that uh, would be um, new parts for people, and that is to increase the organ transplant liquidity um, you can now, with one of our portfolio companies, Xtherma, you can um, jet a heart from Europe to America, and it will still be viable. Wow. Uh, so that, that was uh, based on a, a ton of funding by DOD. Right. Of course, they have obvious reasons for that. And so that's another thing that we look at in our investment. Who are the natural allies of this technology? And so this is, you know, it exists. Operations are happening as a result of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then mito mitochondrial resupply. One of our strategies is restock the shelves. When stuff runs out, what do you do? Mm -hmm. you're, you're just out. You're out of bullets. Well, um, uh, Mitrix technologies we've invested in to uh, create a bioreactor to manufacture perfect uh, mitochondria. And mitochondria is where the rubber meets the road in the human body. Um, you got all these processes, but they all depend on energy. Well, if the energy declines and disappears, it doesn't matter how good the processes are, they can't run. Yeah. What I'm going to be talking about is the grand barrier from achieving our deadline of 2030. And that grand barrier is um, animal testing versus testing in human tissues. So we're going to be talking about the, the economics, uh, the disastrous economics of continuing to use uh, mouse and animal models to model human life mm -hmm. and yep. interventions. So, so that's I, what I'll be talking about. That's, that's 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 fascinating. I guess that we don't we don't want to um, uh, steal your thunder now, but it would be very interesting to learn what you're going to say about that. And obviously, maybe we can run another interview or an article about that after the conference. Be delighted. Wonderful. Well, Dave, thanks again for your time, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, Phil. Thanks a lot.